Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Live here. And yep, I've only blooming played Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak now, haven't I? Capcom invited me down to their headquarters and I gave it a go. I played for about 90 minutes, maybe a little bit more than that because I was early and then I think I hung around a little bit longer than I should have done. But even so, you know, I feel like... I, I, I mean, full disclosure, I barely feel like in the time that I played it... I, I even scratched the surface. I managed to fight two monsters. I, I tell you what, why don't I get, do the finish the intro and then actually talk about it? But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. Right, so I, I tell you what, I'll just give you a rundown of what I played so you can get an idea of what I've played and how little it is of Sunbreak overall. Like, really, it really is just just a slither of what I played. I fought, um, I, I did, there were two quests available, uh, the Lunagaron and the Seregios, and uh, I did manage to see, oh, I've forgotten the name of it, Garen Golm. I also got to see a fight a Garen Golm briefly as well, which was, um, that was terrifying. The, the guy who was there was just like, oh, you're lucky, because it was like a random chance of what you were going to get, because it was, you know, one of those sort of happenstance monsters that you get. Um, I think there's a term for it, but it evades me. It's quite early in the morning right now. But that was really good fun. The, the Lunar Garon overall, though, um, and, and to be honest, the Seregios as well. The Seregios was one of the follower quests, which I'll go into a little bit more detail about later on. Um, but both of them were absolutely balls to the wall really tough. And I know, you know, Sunbreak is essentially kind of like, it's the master rank, it's the G rank stuff, and that's what you want, because the base game, whilst it wasn't like, completely like a walk in the park, and certainly not for new players, I'm sure, overall I did find it, and I know a lot of other people feel this way, a little bit easy compared to previous Monster Hunter games. Certainly like, three and four. Like, three? I, I was much worse at the game back then, but I still don't think I ever got a Devil Yo down. Or Devil Joe. I never worked out how it's supposed to be pronounced. I got to run around the hub area a little bit. Not much. It's a new hub area. And that seems fine and fun. Um, just a little bit strange to not know where anything is all of a sudden. But, you know, you you learn quickly. And there's a load of other little things as well. A load of little new things. Like, uh, arguably, some of them are just quality of life uh, improvements. Uh, things like it actually shows you some of the moves you can do on screen at all times. I'm, I'm pretty... I'm, like, 99% certain you can turn that off because... I, I found it marginally distracting, but I wanted to keep it on because it sort of felt like, well, this is part of the, the new thing, and I wanted to keep it all in the footage. And it is it is handy sometimes as a reference, particularly when you've got one of the other new things, which is the, the skill scrolls or, or swap scrolls. Alex, you forget your words. Swap scrolls. Basically, these allow you to have two loadouts. Maybe there's more, I don't know. I only got access to the red and blue. Maybe that's everything, I don't know. <laughs> you know, Monster Hunter is a is a dense old game, so it wouldn't surprise me if there was more. And it essentially allows you to have two different loadouts of switch skills. So that includes things like your silk bind stuff and all that sort of thing. And you can switch between them on the fly. You do... You do leave yourself quite vulnerable. I mean, not massively, but um, I'm used to... <laughs> I often use a hunting horn and a heavy bow gun, so I'm used to leaving myself vulnerable. But there have been times when I've thought to myself, oh, I could really do with a different silk bind attack or something like that. So this is brilliant. It's a, it's a great way to sort of open things up. And in a way, it's one of those features where I looked at it and I was like... Yeah, that, that wasn't in the base game, but it sort of feels like it should have been. And I'm not I'm not being judgmental about that. It just it sort of fits really well with everything. And I don't know. I just it just wasn't there before. There's also uh, with the Dango, there's a different skewer you can use, which um, changes the likelihood of getting different things. So you will improve the likelihood of getting one and sort of keep one the same and one much lower. So if you really want to prioritize something or maybe you want something that has a low a chance of activation you and you don't want to use the dango ticket you can just use that skewer and it's it's just it's a little feature it's not a big deal but um it's it's definitely the kind of another layer of monster hunter that we've come to expect from capcom it really is the ice spawn of monster hunter rise and whilst that's to be expected it's also reassuring that's exactly what i wanted and i think that's what a lot of fans wanted you know load of new monsters and load of new quality of life improvements it doesn't just feel like a big dlc package it feels like 
an upgrade to the base game as well, kind of like an ultimate version, you know, as they've done in the past, and often that's been the only version we've had in the West. But let's talk a little bit more about the monsters. So the Lunar Garon quest that I did, um, as I said, I got a Garon Golm. Um, that <laughs> I got my I got my ass handed to me every single time. I I couldn't take it down. I couldn't. I don't know whether it was just because. I was flustered, or more likely it was just, you know, kind of beyond my skill level. I had plenty of really powerful armor, but it really was absolutely making mincemeat of me. Even in multiplayer as well, I had to go with the, uh, the chap who was showing me around, and we couldn't do it. We couldn't do it, and I know obviously it'll raise the HP by playing in multiplayer, but still, I do think that, you know, certainly, maybe not with two people, when you've got four people, the added health, it kind of still makes it, it's still easier playing with four people. It's un unless uh, one of your teammate goes down three times, which can happen. It was a good fight, though. Like, it was really tough. I managed to ride the Garen Golm and press the wrong button um, to attack. I pressed Y instead of X to do a light attack, so I, I just drove it into a, into a wall, which was uh, not my finest moment, but um, definitely, definitely really good um, fun. I, I did find that the Lunar Garon didn't feel has like brand new and original i mean it did don't get me wrong but at the same time i sort of felt like oh i fought something like this before but the garen golem again you know it's it's still a beast you know monster it's not anything whoa out of this world or anything like that but it it definitely felt more different i'm much more excited about fighting the garen golem um than the lunar garon but then we have the seregios as well the quest that i did that in and that was um <laughs> that was a follower quest, which means you go around with an NPC, and um, that was good fun. I, In a way, I didn't really feel like the NPC was there, but then I do play a lot online, you know, sort of with friends and things, and often with randoms, and so seeing another ho uh, a hunter there didn't really sort of like go, oh wow, this is a really original and different uh, experience. It felt very much the same, to be honest. I... I mean, you did get some. You did get some different interactions. There were some things. Um, the Seregios has this move where it basically flies up in the air and it just swoops down, and it is brutally hard to avoid when you don't expect it. I kind of got the hang of it, and I was actually able to take the Seregios down, which I was really pleased with. Um, but it did help that um, Arlo was saying. He, he had a cue every time it happened. He was like, watch out, or something like that. And uh, then it would swoop down and it would do its uh, big thing. And that thing is like, it, it took off a huge chunk of your health. Big wind up. It's obvious when it's going to happen. Um, but if you're in a disadvantaged position, you know, you've been knocked down or you're paralyzed or dazed or something, uh, you can easily die and I, I did. But yeah, whilst I wouldn't say I was disappointed by the follower quests, I was expecting it to be a bit more different compared to a standard hunt. Um, but maybe maybe the one that I did was the least interesting. You know, Arlo, maybe he's just the least interesting follower character or something. I don't know. But um, I, it, it would be nice to do something with like uh, Hinoa and Minoto and stuff like that. You know, characters that um, I feel that you interact with a bit more. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if those are in there. Maybe they've already been announced. Um, I feel like I've just had complete Monster Hunter overload in my head now. I just can't keep track. And I think that's the nub of it. I think that's what it all boils down to, is that what I experienced from Sunbreak, Sunbreak is, to me, more Monster Hunter, which I know is a really obvious thing to say. It's not doing anything absolutely revolutionary or anything like that, but... I wasn't expecting it to, and to be honest, I wouldn't necessarily want it to, you know. Rise was already, like, crazy different in so many ways with things like all the wirebug stuff and things like that. And I wouldn't want them to go too far away from that, certainly not for a DLC. But at the same time, Sunbreak is kind of feeling... It is kind of feeling like a sequel in some ways. It's kind of feeling like Monster Hunter Rise 2, which um, it isn't, but, you know, it sort of has that vibe about it, and that's... That's pretty much what I wanted, and that's what I think a lot of Monster Hunter fans want. They just want more Monster Hunter, you know, more monsters, more quality of life features. And it's ticking all those boxes. Um, I, I'm just I'm just thrilled, because I'm always a little bit worried when it comes to DLC that it's going to be a little bit lackluster. And admittedly, I don't know how much content is going to be in here, but from the way that it's been presented, it feels like it's going to be a substantial amount and the the base game was substantial already 
and I kind of get the feeling that it's going to go even further in Sunbreak. Admittedly, I don't know that. We will have to wait and see. But from what very little I played, it just, I just, I, you know, it's, it's like, it's not like it entirely, but I did feel sitting down that it was like kind of getting into a new Monster Hunter game. Like, hey, here's all the new things you need to learn. And it was like, oh my God, but that's Monster Hunter and that's what you want. It's absolutely not going to be for everyone. It's, you know, obtuse. It's incredibly detailed and dense. But that's, you know, that's what Monster Hunter is. And I think they drifted a little bit too far away from that in World. And Rise is the nice balance, you know, making it modern and accessible, but still intrinsically Monster Hunter. And I believe we're getting a continuation of that with Sunbreak. So I'm excited. And there you have it. That's our very, very small look at Monster Hunter Sunbreak. Like, seriously, after I stepped away, I was just, I felt overwhelmed. And looking back on it now, I feel like, is that really... Did I really only do two quests? And yeah, I did. But what do you think? Do you like the look of it? Do you think it's exciting? Let us know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you change from that not subscribed swap scroll to the subscribed swap scroll. <laughs> and be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. Oh,